Hello and welcome to this short video brought to you by Tutor to you. This video is going to be looking at the AQA A-level specification for psychology and in particular we are going to be recapping research methods and the different types of experiments. Firstly we'll begin with laboratory experiments. So laboratory experiments or more commonly known as lab experiments are conducted under controlled conditions in which the researcher deliberately changes something, which is the IV, to see the effect of this on something else, the DV. Remember, independent variable is what you change and dependent variable is what you measure. A good way to remember this is the phrase dairy milk ice cream. Dairy milk begins with D and M, so dependent is what you measure. Ice cream begins with I and C, so the independent is what you change. One of the more common questions in exams when looking at different types of experiments is around evaluation. This means pulling out the strengths and the limitations of each of your different types of experiments. So if we begin with evaluating lab experiments, the first strength here is arguably one of the easiest and more obvious to go for. This is the fact that it's got high control over extraneous variables. Remember with lab experiments, there is that high degree of control. And this means that we can ensure that any effect on the DV is likely to be the result of the manipulation of the IV, leading to high internal validity. Another strength is that replication is possible because of the high level of control. We can see where the findings are valid and not just a one-off. However, it lacks generalizability outside of research settings due to the artificial environment. So with the high degree of control comes artificial environments. This leads to low external or ecological validity. Another limitation is that participants are often aware that they are being tested. If you go to an experiment which is in a very artificial and controlled environment, it's very difficult to carry this out without realizing that you are part of the experiment. And this leads to demand characteristics. A final limitation is that the tasks that participants are asked to carry out might not represent real life. And this leads to something called low mundane realism. So if the tasks that the participants are given are quite artificial and not very realistic, which is very common with lab experiments, then it leads to low mundane realism. The second type of experiment that you need to know about is field experiments. These are very similar to lab experiments in the sense that the researcher manipulates something, which is the IV, to see the effect of this on something else, which is the DV. The only difference between lab experiments and field experiments are that field experiments are carried out in a more natural setting. So it could be a local park or a classroom, but we lose that level of artificiality. So let's consider some of the strengths and limitations of field experiments. So the biggest strength is that it's got higher mundane realism because the environment is more natural and it may produce behaviour that is more valid and authentic, which gives us a high external validity. With this, we also have high levels of ecological validity. Ecological validity is the idea that we can apply the findings from the experiment to real life world situations. Now, if the experiment is a lot more natural, this increases the ecological validity. However, with increased realism comes the loss of control that you will get with the lab experiments. And as a result, loss of control over extraneous variables. As a result, cause and effect is much more difficult to establish. Another limitation comes with the ethical issues. Now, often in field experiments, participants might not be aware that they are taking part in an experiment because it's much more natural. If participants are unaware that they are being studied, and this isn't all the time in field experiments, but can be quite often, they cannot consent to being studied, and such research might constitute an invasion of privacy. Now we're going to take a look at natural experiments. People commonly get confused between natural experiments and field experiments. Now remember, field experiments are very similar to lab experiments in that the researcher manipulates or changes something, which is the IV, to look for the effect on the DV. The researcher, in other words, is in control. The only difference with a field experiment is that it happens in more of a natural setting. With a natural experiment, this is when the researcher takes advantage of a 
pre-existent independent variable. So the research themselves is not controlling, they're not changing that independent variable, it already exists. The experiment is called natural because the change in the variable is naturally occurring. It's the IV, which is natural, not necessarily the setting. Let's take a look at some of the evaluation points now for natural experiments. So a strength is they provide opportunities for research that may not otherwise be undertaken for practical or ethical reasons. So cast your minds to Rutter's Romanian orphanages study. Now this was a natural experiment given that the children were orphans. This wasn't manipulated by the researcher. But one of the things that Rutter wanted to look at was the age of adoption. And again, this was an IV which was already set. The researcher couldn't control at what age they got adopted. Another strength is the high external validity because they involve the study of real life issues and problems as they happen, such as the effects of a natural disaster on stress levels. You might look at individual stress levels before and after a natural disaster has taken place. Now the IV here, which is before and after the natural disaster, isn't controlled by the researcher, it's naturally occurring. However, a limitation is a naturally occurring event may only happen very rarely and this reduces the opportunities for research. In other words, it limits the scope for generalization of findings. Another limitation is that participants might not be randomly allocated to experimental conditions. The researcher, therefore, might be less sure whether the IV did in fact affect the DV. The final type of experiment you need to know about is quasi-experiments. Quasi-experiments have an IV that is based on an existing difference between people. For instance, their age, their gender, or their mental health. So quasi-experiments is really looking at the participants themselves. An example of a quasi-experiment could involve giving a memory task to a group of clinically depressed participants and comparing the results of the same memory task to a control group of non-depressed participants. Now, this is a quasi-experiment here because it's an existing difference between people who are being researched. In other words, you have people who are clinically depressed and people who are not clinically depressed. The researcher can't control what condition these participants go into because the participant is either depressed or they're not. It's the same with if you wanted to look at whether males or females have generally a higher fitness score. You couldn't dictate as a researcher what group the participants went into. That would already be decided, whether they are male or female. So remember with quasi-experiments, we're looking at an existing difference between people. Now it's quite easy to remember the strengths and the limitations of quasi-experiments because they are very similar to lab experiments in the strengths and very similar to natural experiments in the limitations. So one strength is that they are often carried out under control conditions and therefore they share the strengths of a lab experiment. So think back to some of those strengths we spoke about before with the lab experiments, so the high control over extraneous variables, being able to identify cause and effect. With a limitation, just like natural experiments, quasi-experiments cannot randomly allocate participants to conditions and therefore there might be some confounding variables there. Thank you for watching this AQA A-Level Psychology video brought to you by tutor to you which focused on research methods and different types of experiments.